How's it going, everybody? My name is Avery, and a few, maybe two, three months ago, a little while back, I came out with a video where I showed I had made this game. It's made with C++ and SDL2, and it's on the web browser. Um, some people had asked me how I did that, and I kind of wanted to come out with a very quick, um, simple tutorial showing how to uh, create basically an SDL2 game that runs on your web browser, so you can host it on your own server and be able to share the game with other people um, and make it easy to use. We're going to be using this software right here. It's called Inscripten. Um, Inscripten, as it even says right here, it is a complete compiler toolchain to WebAssembly. So it'll compile your code, um, the C or C++ code, with the STL2 library as well, and it'll be able to compile it to WebAssembly, meaning that it'll run on the web, basically. So we're gonna go ahead and get this set up. You just go out of the link in the description. You're gonna want to go and download it. Um, for downloading it, you're actually just going to clone the repository for it. We can go ahead and do that. Just paste that right here. Get clone and then the link to the repository and as you can see it was pretty fast we're just going to jump right into here and we're going to want to set up some of it um, it wants you to do git pull that's uh, just for the example but we already cloned it it's going to have the newest version and now we can look in here and there's this command em sdk it's already uh, executable so we're going to execute it and we're going to install the latest I have this installed on my computer already, so we'll, it might give a little bit different output for you, but we can go ahead and test it. And this shouldn't take too long, but really you just want to wait for it, and once it's done, you'll be ready. And then you install the latest, and then afterwards we're going to activate the latest, basically. And this is going to get everything all configured, and it's basically going to set up the compiler. So you can compile your C and C++ code to assembly. And it's going to be as simple as that. And as you can see now, it finished installing. And we can go ahead and try that activate line. And we'll just do this right here. Activate. As such. And it should have everything all configured for you. It even mentions some things, extra stuff that you can do. But it should all be working. And now we're going to want to source this environment variable. So it's going to be sourced. We have this variable um, msdk environment shell, and this basically should be the command that we're running. Um, let's do source and then dot msdk underscore environment dot sh, and it's source as simple as that. Um, this makes it so you can run it uh, from other places. I also changed it in my for my home under just my bash configuration, what's that called? Right here, RC. And I put it down here towards the bottom. Um, this is directly connecting to it. And I have it spit out some output to dev null because as you can see, it has all this output. And I don't want it to show that up every single time that I open a new browser or a new terminal. And uh, But it's as simple as that. We should have this command now, this emcc. And EMCC, it's, you know, it's a compiler like G++ or GCC, but it's going to compile your code to WebAssembly. So now let's close out of that. So we've got this all set up, so now let's go ahead and work on a project. We have a project right here. Um, this isn't going to be teaching you how to use SS, um, SDL2. So let's say you already have your SDL2 project, and here's an example of what it does. It has this window, shows the frame rate, and you have this image. So obviously we're going to be loading in images and we're also going to be loading in a font. And the font is a TTF file. So if you look in here, we have an image, it's a PNG, and then there's a TTF for our font. And as of right now, if we were to look at this build script, it's just G++ and it uses the SCL2 image and TTF libraries along with a single file of code. And we can go ahead and look at this code and kind of see how it works. It's pretty basic. We're just including the SDL stuff. We're setting up some of the windows and the renderers and whatnot. And we're setting up some stuff for the frame count. Um, so it's pretty basic stuff. We're loading in an image. We're drawing an image. We're writing our font. or writing our text from our font. We're updating keys so we know when to close the window and whatnot. Obviously, if you're in 
in the browser. You don't want to close the window, but maybe you want to set up some sort of thing to um, tell the, the game to pause and whatnot. Um, so that's something you can change. And then we're initializing some more of the window and the render and whatnot. And we're quitting out of it. And we have our loop. And we have our main function. It initializes everything, has our main loop, and then it has a quit. So I'm going to show you if you have a game that's pretty similar to this, which is how most things in SDL2 are designed, I'm going to show you how you can convert that to work with EMCC. And it's going to be pretty simple. Um, I already have that version ready, and I'll show you what some of the differences are. And um, let's hop right into it. It's going to be gedit main.c. So the first thing you want to do is include the inscription header. So you just include it like that. Um, of course, if you use G++, it's not going to know what this header is. So we want to make sure that you're using EMCC to compile it, and it knows where this header is. And now, we previously had a bunch of variables, um, such as for the render and for the mouse and whatnot. We're going to want to put all these variables into a struct. So I just have it called struct context. And you just close it down here. So we have everything just that we had previously um, just inside of here. Let's go ahead and open that previous one so we can see some of the differences. Um, right here, as you can see, we didn't have it saved in anything, but in here, we have it within a struct. And now we can jump down to our main class. Our main class, we create an object with this context. We call it context. And we're actually going to initialize some of the window and whatnot a little differently. And here we had some basic, I mean, some more advanced things for initializing stuff. We initialize everything, and we set the position to the window, even though our position is undefined. That's hopefully in the center. And we set up some other information, such as vSync and blend mode. But in here, we're going to do it a lot basic, um, a lot more basic. Um, we're just going to do SDL init right here. And then we're defining the width and the height. We can create a window. You can set the title, although setting the title doesn't really do anything. And then we set the window. It's just going to be the window and the title string. Um, that's for setting the window title. But like I mentioned, these are two things you don't actually really need. You create a renderer, and then from there, you activate the renderer and window um, just by doing such. And then make sure down here to destroy the renderer window. And right here, you're going to actually set your context render to render. And then in the quit function, it actually just destroys that and it quits out of SDL. Um, so maybe actually this should be, since SDL is quitting, that should be there. But either way, um, this doesn't really need to be a function. You can just have it down here. Just make sure that you um, destroy everything you have. And then in this init function, I pulled out some of the stuff that was in the previous init function because we changed the window a little bit. But we're initializing some other things. Um, such as loading in the image and loading in the font. So as you can see, this works the exact same way. Um, I have it all in a resource directory, RES, and I'll show you how we're doing that once we go to compile it, but it's going to compile the same way. So now what the main difference right here is we don't have this while running loop. We're going to want to create call the loop right here within scripten, set main loop, and then you give it the name of your function, you give it an argument to pass into that function, which is a reference to the context. And then this right here should be one. But we're passing in. Um, basically, uh, negative one is going to tell it, uh, try to render it as fast as possible. And one is, say, render it forever. So it's just going to be a loop over and over. So now we look in our main loop. We take an avoid argument. So we're taking in the argument, a pointer from it. And we're creating a context from that context argument, which is just this way. Um, it's as simple as that. And now that we have the context, we're able to share all the information um, uh, back and forth, basically, for the information about our game. Um, so now we just call the loop function, which we had in the previous one. It's just for basic rendering and keyboard update stuff. I went ahead and got rid of the running. Um, there's no way to close out of it or anything, like I mentioned before. And then if you want to draw an image, um, just make sure that you're pointing towards everything. Uh, it's not just logo anymore like it was before. It has a logo and the FPS and the mouse and whatnot. It's all going to be need to be pointing.
towards it just like this. But other than that, it all works the same. And also, if you were to print something out, it'll actually just do the same thing as like JavaScript console log. So we can go ahead and we can print out the mouse's location. And we can inspect the website and be able to look at that as well. And it might give out a few other errors, but you'll be able to check stuff basically that way. And make sure anytime, basically, when you're calling these functions, just pass in the context and then receive the context and then just use all your variables within that context basically or within that you know the struct so everything is the exact same other than all of them are receiving this context and they're all pointing towards information from it um, but yeah it's as simple as that I'm going to have all of this code up uh, soon probably the time this video publishes so you guys can go ahead and check it out yourself and we can go ahead and look at how it's built. So this right here was a previous build, but now if we look at it, this is what we're doing instead. So now I'm using emcc, which the source should make it so you can use that. We're passing in the name of our file. Um, this should work for C++ and C files. Um, we're setting it to WebAssembly, and we're telling it some of the libraries that we're using. So we're using SDL um, version 2, we're using SDL image, and the image format is going to be PNG and we're using SDL TTF and then we want to preload some files and those preloaded files are in the RES, the resource directory and then our output is actually going to be this index.js file so that's what it's going to be creating for us uh, it's basically going to convert all the code to WebAssembly that's encoded in this JavaScript file but of course you want to have it in an HTML file so we have this index that HTML and the main thing is we're going to be creating this canvas canvas and then once it's created it's going to prevent default and you can have this code right here that basically it has the canvas stuff as well and it's going to load in this index.js and that's going to fill in the canvas it's going to be set to the window and height size that you set it in your SDL code and it's as simple as that so we can go ahead and build it, build it, it's just what this code does right there. And we can go ahead and actually check it out. As you can see, this is the same thing that we had with a previous SDL project when we compiled it with G++, but now it's working in the web browser. It loads in the image, it loads in the font, so basically you can do anything with this now. Uh, you can play around with it, you can create a game similar to this. Um, any sort of project that you can do in SDL2, you can now port to the web browser. So I thought it was pretty useful. Um, I mean, it makes your game super accessible. Um, everyone's on the internet, and it's people don't have to install and set up your game and whatnot, or any sort of other SDL2 project you have. And of course, this isn't just for SDL2. Now that you know this, I um, mean, kind of make this work with other projects as well. Um, it's pretty interesting. I thought it was very useful, and hopefully you guys find this useful as well. And if you guys enjoyed the video, leave it a like. Check out the code. It's going to be in the description. And see you guys again next time. Bye.